Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this wonderful Saturday night, June 17th, 2023. It's about 10 13 p.m. here along the West Coast. Uh, latest earthquake here on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Let's go back here, back out of here real quick. Shows a 3.0. Also a 2.6 here in the Mediterranean area. 3.0 is going to be in the red flag. Uh, somewhere here along the Philippines region. Latest activity there on the globe. Uh, zooming in to Northern California. We did see a 4.4 earthquake here along the Makama Fault Zone. Uh, just off of the Makama Fault Zone. About 8.4 kilometers deep. Uh, there's this earthquake coming in. Just uh, like I said a couple hours ago. It was felt locally across the region here around Ukiah. Uh, most of the activity there generally weak to like light shaking around Ukiah and the Lakeport area. Uh, it's, uh, at least looking on the map here, it's a ways away from the Makama Fault, so this would be well inland. Uh, hopefully this is not a sign of very compacted activity out here along the west coast, but you never know. Uh, the latest quake of 1.7 near Cloverdale a little bit further down south of the Ukiah area, uh, making itself known there on the map. Far as uh, the rest of the California area, it's awfully quiet for a major plate boundary. This is very odd. Uh, not seeing any major movement across the Bay Area or the central portion here of the San Andreas Fault. And uh, further down south, things are very minimal as well. This has been the trend of activity here recently so um, it's very odd for a major plate boundary out here to be this quiet rest of the states very quiet as well uh, as we look towards the uh, big island of hawaii most of the movement there around pahala we did see a little bit of activity stretching off the southeastern coast here of the big island out into the pacific ocean the oceanic crust out here with a couple other smaller quakes out there into the uh levels of the oceanic floor region around japan seen things uptick as well uh, with a few earthquakes uh, including a 5.7 around the coral islands most of the activity though in the five and the four range but a noticeable uptick here across the uh, japan region as you can see here on the globe a lot of this activity deeper movement quakes with that uh, large five point seven there into the Kuro Kamachaka Trench very deep earthquake and uh, this is older movement though from this morning far as newer activity goes most of it is cluttered up here south of the Philippines with a uh, quite a few twos and threes um, in the area south of the Philippines there as you can see clustered up into that level I uh, got a 3.1 coming in just south uh, southeastern Australia, uh, somewhat of an odd earthquake out here, near the southeast coast of Australia, three kilometers deep. The map here showing the interactive epicenter area, southwest of Sydney, it looks like. Of course, that is a major populated area out there, Sydney, Australia. I would love to visit out there. I'm not even joking. One of these days, we'll get out there, but uh, for now... We'll just report on earthquakes that are occurring down in that area. 3.1 in the uh, Sydney, Australia area. As far as any further movement across New Zealand, let's go ahead and zoom into the GeoNet servers here. See what we have, right? 2.2, seven hours ago. Doesn't look like anything major going on across the uh, New Zealand area. The, the earthquake drums here will give us the truth so to speak and uh, some older movement there from about 24 hours ago but far as recent activity goes uh, doesn't look like anything spectacular going on that uh, let me bring up the map here the activity you're seeing there on the graph was about 14 hours ago or so and that's going to be the um, I think we had about a four pointer or so let me see here 4.2 that was the earthquake down there along the 
Alpine Fault, specifically right there on the Alpine Fault, as you can see here on the map. Uh, let's zoom in just a little bit. The plate boundary here consists right across this island. You can pretty much draw uh, the plate boundary across, across the northern segment of the South Island area. And that's where that 4.2 came in, uh, along with uh, uh, a little bit of activity following that movement. But uh, New Zealand definitely in the mix there of larger scale potential. South America region, twos, threes, and fours are the numbers out there across Chile area. Uh, aside from that, uh, let's see what we got here around the area of Afghanistan, it looks like. Let me, I, well outside of Afghanistan. This is actually in China. Quite a few fours kicking off here earlier tonight. As far as the historical data goes out here, it looks like... Uh, we have seen some uh, movement out there. Doesn't look like anything major, maybe some fours and fives in this area of China, but it is a ways away from the major plate boundary here down south along the Himalayas, south of the Himalayas. Uh, but they do get uh, some occasional earthquake activity out there. Uh, across the Mediterranean, most of the activity here, um, smaller movement we did see a 4.3 in the central turkey area earlier this afternoon as you can see here on the map most of the general movement here across the area uh, some smaller quakes including a 2.6 coming in uh, within the last 20 minutes or so Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet uh, let's go over and check out the trimmer map here tonight for the Cascadia subduction zone 12 measly trimmers there across the uh, northern California area this is the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone nothing major going on there uh, for now Yellowstone National Park as we check out the Wyoming area shows uh, uh, looks like there was a little bit of activity here across the central portion here of the uh, Yellowstone area that was oh goodness that was a good eight or ten hours ago or so let me see what we got for a movement I don't think uh, well yeah they, they actually reported that there well has it been tw 12 hours maybe close to 11 hours 2.8 a little bit further down south here of Lake Yellowstone all right, space weather activity as we look into the uh, solarham.net site. M flare earlier today peeking out, but for the most part, we're looking at 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 30, X flare around 5% chance. And for the most part, uh, the coronal or at least the solar flare activity threat is, um, well, I want to say it's around this region right here, but even so, it doesn't look all that active. This area here is very quiet, it's very stable, and even though even though this is a ginormous sunspot up here, things look relatively stable uh, for the most part across that area. Uh, right now, it looks like 33.35 Beta Gamma class here, so 33.35 is going to be this regional sunspot right here. That harbors a little bit of potential here across these, uh, across this, uh, uh, the sunspot region that may pose a threat for some elevated activity. But looking at the latest magnetogram here, shows it uh, fairly stable. But we'll continue to watch that though for some further movement. We'll see how it plays out. Right. Uh, no major solar flares, so no major coronal holes and no major CMEs means very calm conditions for now weather activity it looks like uh, at least for tomorrow uh let's see what we got here oh that's sunday let me go back here for saturday wait this is currently saturday tomorrow's sunday right current threat uh far as sunday goes let's go and check this out day two 
Uh, most of the activity shifts well to the east here into the southern states around Arkansas, Louisiana, and into uh, Jackson. Jackson area, it looks like. Uh, Mississippi. Tornado probability, only 2% chance. The main threat looks like some damaging hell potential out there. All right, uh, let's go out here to the regions and check out the big picture, the North Pacific, North Pacific image here. This kind of shows a broad area, though, uh, more than the North Pacific area. But we want to check out some dynamics here over the next few days. I kind of want to see what's going on here along the West Coast. Of course, we got some major cool down going on here with this trough of low pressure entering into northern california and the pacific northwest chance of uh below freezing temperatures up there into oregon and washington goodness can you believe that in the middle of june that's almost unheard of so this is a very rare event unfortunately there's not a lot of moisture associated with it but it will bring some cool temperatures here to the uh, west coast and as we head into the first week of july well, this is a ways out there, but I'm not seeing any prominent high pressure ridging out here along the West Coast, which is a good sign to prevent some major heat spells out here along the California area. Keep that high pressure away. All right, folks, have a good night. Stay safe out there. We're going to bounce out of here. And uh, Sunday, I'm a little bit tired tonight. I don't know why, but I feel exceptionally tired. I don't think it's the heat. Um, I don't know what it is, but just feeling unusually drained and tired today. I'll uh, we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow, Sunday morning, for the update. Have a good night, everyone.